All right, Maddie, we are back with another week in crypto, and we had a very interesting weekend, and we're going to get all into it here, team. Maddie, how are we feeling about the markets at this point with Bitcoin kind of slowly marching its way up again? Well, boy, it's a lot better than that bloodbath we had last weekend. Uh, you know, coming back, and everyone was kind of licking their wounds a little bit. So it's nice this weekend to see uh, a little bit of recovery in the markets, a little bit of stability. We discussed on our show recently, you know, the the variety of ways that Bitcoin could be moving right now. We compared it to uh, a correction that we had uh, from December through early January, and we could be mirroring something similar to that right now. Uh, you know, we did see a big flush in the altcoin market, and I think a lot of altcoins got an opportunity to rebalance their structures. Some of them, have unfortunately, hurt a little worse than others. But I think from a structural standpoint, we're really well positioned right now. As long as Bitcoin can hold these lows, uh, we could be in for some exciting uh, months ahead here into 2024. Maddie, so my question is, so we saw Bitcoin having happening on Friday, and that didn't mean we were going straight to the moon, even though we are marching up, you know, Bitcoin's marching up, all coins are falling behind. I've listened to a couple a couple reputable TA uh, people this weekend, some analysts this weekend, hearing what they have to say. And my question for you is, how long do you see us foresee us in this zone here? Bitcoin's marching up, but we're still in the same zone here. So how long do we rest in this zone for? <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's always kind of the tricky part is is timing the markets, right? Um, when we looked at previous periods of consolidation, um, we have seen longer than what we have now. I think that it's good that we have had some cool off here in Bitcoin, I'll, you know, albeit some volatility, but that's part of the consolidation and compression uh, that occurs on the charts. Uh, how long exactly we're going to be compressed in, in this exact structure, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I think that we could have maybe a few more weeks, at least if we were to kind of just go top and bottom with, you know, where we are with the flagging structure, that there is more time that could be potentially played out within the structure and Bitcoin could not make a move and that would still be perfectly healthy for the market. In fact, uh, if we could get a little bit of a longer extended consolidation out of Bitcoin, uh, maybe paired with a little bit of a drop in Bitcoin dominance, that could be a really excellent catalyst for altcoins to make some sort of catch up move here. So that's what I'm rooting for at the end of the day is for Bitcoin actually take a little bit more time where it is now before making another lay, impulsive leg up, maybe a little bit of a further drop off in dominance. Uh, and then that would kind of give the markets a little bit more of a signal of, hey, we're fully rebalanced. We've kind of made some catch up moves here. Now we're ready for Bitcoin to make its next leg up. Like you mentioned, you know, Bitcoin halving did occur, uh, not immediately to the moon after the halving. Again, just more evidence that we cannot time the next parabolic move based on a, uh, you know, a halving cycle or, you know, a decrease in the amount of rewards that are paid for the same amount of work. Uh, but over time, it's really kind of the, the bigger implication is that we take supply off the table. But it's really, I would say, something you'd see impacted over a 10 year or a 20 year period, not over, hey, three to four months. This happens because of this having effect. So, again, we're seeing a lot of the debunking there. I think it's a healthy thing that we're able to evaluate these markets more objectively and just continue to understand that crypto moves like a risk on asset, like stocks or any other risk on asset. Yeah, I like that, man. When going through like my news research, seeing what was happening out there, you could like you see news articles trying to pin up like this last like market correction. With like I was looking at altcoins, like oh, Casper corrected for this reason. Like the whole, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, I can't say that. But the whole market corrected. Sorry for cussing. <laughs> sorry, but the whole market corrected. Like what are you even talking about? So it's just funny kind of seeing how they're trying to pin up these news articles. As you've been right. like sp speaking about a lot here, but like when you actually get to go through these news articles, you see, oh yeah, these people have no idea what they're talking about. So, um, but last thing before I give like the official intro is Maddie, how are altcoins doing? Is there any good buying opportunities right now? Yeah, definitely still playing a good, plenty of good buying opportunities right now. Please, please, please use the opportunities that we have in front of us uh, where you see that we've rebalanced accumulation, uh, maybe even revisited low. Zcash is again offering some fantastic buys right now. Casper is still in accumulation. Um, one of the assets that I've looked to add a little bit to recently is Helium. Helium dropping back down kind of into the uh, secondary area of interest that we looked at there. We lowered our average on our sushi trade. Uh, there's definitely a lot of opportunity to either correct some of your higher entries or to start establishing positions now. Please, please, please look at all the other periods that we've had where we've had, you know, these multiple months of up and everyone kept telling you, hey, this is it. You know, you got to keep buying into this uptrend because this is, you know, there's not going to be another opportunity. Well, boom, guys, here's the opportunity, right? You got a very, very aggressive and very large market correction. Don't squander this. So there's plenty of opportunities out there. Of course, we're covering those regularly on the Crypto Charge Live show. Monday through Friday. Uh, but, you, you know, guys, there's there's plenty of opportunity out there. Don't feel like you have to throw your money at the uh, next meme coin you think is going to do with 1000X. There's legit opportunities out there that are offering 10s, 20s, and more. 
I like that, Manny. Team, we're going to have a great show. We're now going to do a little bit intro portion of our show. So you're going to want to stick around to the end. We have a lot still to talk about here. Just want to get that out for you guys. You guys may be worried. You guys may be concerned. Oh, what? The uh, Bitcoin didn't go to 100K over the weekend. I thought the Bitcoin happening was this. No, guys, do not freak out. We are going to bring you all the information you need here and all the excess information you definitely need to see is that Crypto Charge. We're from Crypto Charge, the education platform. So make sure you guys check us out there. I know people over the weekend will have questions, be doing a little deep dive, and you want to, you know, collab with the community and be like, hey, guys, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And that's where we do that at. So team, definitely join the community. We need you guys in there. You can watch our shows on the platform and then use the tools and then hop into Discord with the rest of the team here what we're directly going to get into on the show today maddie is you know follow us on twitter we had some of the casper people come at us on twitter in particular it's the shibu community the shibu accounts the big accounts and the fatso accounts these big people that you know want to come at us because we like talking about casper but if we won't shill the meme coins that run on the casper network all of a sudden, we're not a part of the Casper community, apparently, Maddie. <laughs> so it's funny how that works. So we'll get into that. And I also want to bring up something very quick. I'll just intro it right now. Was, you know, do my news research, looking into, you know, and of course, I have to search up what's going on in the meme coin world just to check that out. And I saw this interesting article that pointed me to this guy named Zach XBT. Yes. And uh, looks like he was... Um, a uh, what was it? What is it? What is it called? He was a victim of a rug pull, and now his duty now, Maddie, is to prevent people's, you know, other mean coins of getting rug pulled. So I went on his account, Maddie, and I looked at it, and he's doing some good work over there. So team, make sure you go check him out. But something that I found on his account was this chart, and the chart shows like what's going on with some of these mean coins of the past month or two with these. Um, the big craze of Solana uh, meme coins or coins that are running on the Solana network. And you see Like, you see Moon, you see Frog, Temple, all these meme coins uh, going nowhere and disappearing overnight. The team, the money gone. So you have about 26.7 million gone. And so our boy Zach here was showing you to stay away from some of these founders. But even more than that, and what I found this weekend was I was listening to one of these creators, Matt, and he was talking about how a project reached out to him and offered him 30K to just like and comment on a tweet of a uh, crypto project, you know, likely to be a meme coin project, as I can't see a reputable project uh, spending 30K on a like and, and a comment on Twitter. And that got me thinking about this weekend. And then this morning, I saw this from Zach XBT. Influencer Bryce Hall made multiple posts promoting a sketchy Solana pre-sale for a meme coin called Earth. And you can see uh, Bryce Hall interacting in this manner. Obviously, like, you know, this isn't getting uh, half a million dollars into the project. But it is doing something. It is, you know, sh showing his community, people that aren't into crypto, people that are like, oh, I might be thinking about crypto. Oh, my boy Bryce Hall that I follow on TikTok that does dances. Let me look at what he has to say about crypto on the project that he's promoting, you know. So it's stupid. Maddie, what is your thoughts on this? Because, uh, again, I'm over this. I'll, I'm probably the most anti-meme coin guy there is. And I know you're probably not a big fan of them all. What is your thoughts about this? Does this make the project reputable is a good thing that project should be doing should we invest into projects where the the uh, project is throwing 30k at an influencer to get a like in a retweet what is your thoughts of this what do you make of this this chart just makes me sad honestly looking at it um knowing that people have taken money that they've worked hard for most likely and uh put it into something they thought was going to give them a 1000 x or a 100 x over you know a, a couple week period because they see everything else is happening on solana and you know, damn it, you're not going to miss out on the next one, right? Uh, there's, again, like I've said many times, there's so much risk already being involved with meme coins. And then we talk about the liquidity issue of, you know, having to be on it on a DEX and, you know, you're most likely not going to be able to sell it whatever you see as marketplace, market price as because there needs to be enough, you know, uh, a sell side and buy side pressure in order for the, the market to be 
liquid. But now on top of that, we feel this need to be involved in the pre-sales. So there's not even a market to dump these on in the event that, you know, it doesn't come online, right? Um, so come on, guys, let's, let's at least if we're going to be doing some of this degenerate stuff, like let's trade the meme coins that are on, you know, sexes that have some liquidity that you can, you know, set up some sort of trade parameters with at least give yourself a fighting chance to be successful. You are taking so many probabilities out of your favor. And that's all trading and investing is guys, right? It's, it's trying to put as many probabilities as humanly possible in your basket, in your favor. And once you start taking those out, because you think, oh, there's a little bit more reward, right? We remove probabilities out of our, ba of our basket, right? We start doing less and less investing and we're doing more and more gambling. That's what really occurs here. Um, as far as, you know, influencers, you have to be careful, guys. This is probably one of the things that I have been so um, devout about uh, since we started Crypto Charge. Gavin manages, you know, one of our, our big emails that people send, you know, requests to all the time. And we've been reached out to by some large exchanges, you know, offering us some uh, nice sums of money to talk positively either about their project or talk positively about their exchange. We never, ever, ever, ever accept money from anybody for any reason um, because we want to be able to come on any show, whether it be our, our, our show with our audience here or here on YouTube, and know that we we're able to give you guys our objective truth. We don't ever want to be able to say or have to say, uh, well, we, you know, we recommended it at the time and, you know, that we just, you know, fell back on X, Y, and Z. We never want to give you guys a mixed analysis. We want to give you guys that true raw analysis. So honestly, anyone who accepts large amounts of money to talk positively about a project, they're most likely being compensated, not just in the money, they'll probably be compensated in those tokens as well. So always, you know, ask yourself, what's the bigger incentive of this person talking about this particular project? Every single project I'm involved with, never been, you know, taken a dime from any of these. These are all just picks that I've you know done research into and will continue to be involved with. So again, guys, be really careful out there. There are more scams than there are quote unquote hidden gems out there. Good insight, Maddie. And you know, a problem of mine that you know I feel the need to all the time to do. And some may look at it as a problem, but I just, you know, I like to draw the line in the sand. It's like, okay, if I go past this point here, I'm entering a completely different realm. And the line in the sand for me was always like, you know, so Look at it from this perspective for me, Maddie. Like, you know, think with me here. So we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have the blue chips, the big cap cryptos. Then we get into small cap crypto land and we get into cryptos like Casper, fairly new, 2021, launched at the end or the starting of a bear market essentially in that year. And so that is it's still a fairly new project, right? And so we, you've, done, you've done the research, you've brought the fundamental analysis here. Now we're looking in 2024, AI governance, you know, they had the Ray Summit this uh, couple of weeks ago, and they're talking about all the things. You got the CEO of Casper Labs talking about how great everything's going to be. Let's get in with IBM, yada, yada, yada. And so that makes me excited about a project, right? Fairly new, but that gets me excited. Now take out all the fundamentals, take out the ability to chart, look at it on a chart, and now you enter meme coin land, which is everything like, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, blue chips, you get to Casper, API 3 is the world. And then you get towards like the ether, right, Maddie? There's all these meme coins. And my question for you is, is like how much, how farther can you reach out there to get lucky essentially or to gamble here? It's like, is Casper where we draw the line? If we're going with my theory here of like Casper is as far as I will go, like what other cryptos are you like okay with or is that just like meme coin land out there like afterwards does that make sense at all I, I think that there can be a pretty fine line between a small cap and a micro cap and sometimes the difference between making a ridiculous amount of money and a lot of money is getting in when a certain asset is a micro cap versus a small cap um, obviously there kind of becomes a little bit of that safety and number mentality as well as market cap climbs it you know obviously it would become more confidence climbing up through the ranks on you know coin market cap or whatever you know other asset you're looking at so I wouldn't say that, you know, market cap alone should deter you from investing, but it really should all come down to is there utility, of, you know, what is the utility of, of X, Y, and Z asset that I'm involved with now? Um, you know, what are the chances of the asset I'm involved with going to zero, right? Well, who, are, who else is at play here? Uh, you know, if I'm if I'm not able to exit at my desired price, what's, what's plan B? What's step two here? Uh, and I think that there's just too many unknowns that happen in the meme coin realm uh, that don't allow us to make informed and educated decisions. Again, at the end of the day, if you cannot have a three or four step plan with exiting out of your meme coins, just like you would with any other asset, you are just going into it blind. Still to this day, I have new people that come into our group and I have to kind of bring everyone back down to earth and they go, hey, I started DCing into this or hey, I just bought this. What do you think a good TP is for this? What do you think a good take profit is for this? What do you mean? 
that means we haven't done any of the planning here, right? We haven't looked at what the ROI is. We don't even know what the risk to reward ratio is because we don't we don't even know where we want to get out. So please, guys, if those are all the questions we're asking ourselves after we buy, then we need to take a step back and make a plan. Most people who get into meme coins don't have a plan because they're not treating this like trading and investing. They are treating it like gambling and you will get the gambling results out of that. And sometimes you get very, very lucky. But more often than not, you are going to get unlucky. You are going to be not chosen as the winner more often than not with a lot of these meme coins. And the bigger the flood of nonsense that we have in this market, the less and less money can pour into your little particular, you know, smoosh coin or whatever the next hottest coin is out there. Really, please be very, very careful, guys. This problem will not go away until the SEC comes in and goes, hold on, these need to be in a different classification uh, of, you know, of tokens or uh, vehicles that people need to have an understanding of what they are before getting invested. Because there are people today that think that, you know, getting into, you know, poo poo coin is just as valid as, as Bitcoin. And that's really just a sad thing for me. We are taking away the seriousness from the space by putting meme coins on the same pedestal as other projects with good long term utility. Maddie, I told you last week, and I'm going to quote uh, the greatest movie of our time, The Wolf of Wall Street here. Don't judge me on my winners. Judge me on my losers because I have so few. And that's how I look at our projects. Team, think about it. If we come on here and start talking about projects that are, I'm going to say highly likely because like from history, that's what it looks like here. If you look at last cycle, all those meme coins that we were talking about are gone. They're in the ether. They're, you can't get them anymore. And now we're here at another moment with meme coins. And I can't sit here and talk about any of these meme coins, especially even the ones that are on the Casper network here. I won't do it because we could go on the website. We can check out, you know, what are, what are all the steps we go through a regular project? Is the team docs? What are the to tokenomics? You know, who's involved? What are the partnerships? Fatso? What, what's going on here? The the head guy won't even ha put his name on the website. Why? Because he was involved <laughs> in some other Ponzi scheme, cryptos. You know, someone linked, Maddie, someone linked it in under our um our video we posted a link to like what's this guy's history and you know he's linked to some other projects that are like went to zero or that don't have a history that don't uh, aren't even available right now. And so like why would I want to invest into a crypto like that when I can invest to the true Casper community token being Casper uh, pretty much anywhere I want to right now besides Coinbase, you know, but I can go on Mexi, I can go on, you can go on Uphold to get it. And, you know, that's how I'm going to be a part of the Casper community is buying the Casper token, Maddie. I feel like that's fair, you know? Right. And so um, what are your thoughts here? Because I need your official thoughts here, Maddie, just so we can get out of the way with this Casper meme coin nonsense. Because you're a Casper bull. You have, you know, sat at the top here as the Casper guy. You've been talking about Casper. You've brought all the updates on the show. What is your thoughts on these meme coins? Is this good or bad? And then I have like maybe a little bit more like personal question to this. As a Casper owner and owner of the Casper token, is there a serious reason that I should be contemplating buying some of these meme coins? So... You know, we were tagged recently in that video on Fatso, and we, you know, obviously looked at the website. Which, by the way, there's a lot of major issues on that website that are just huge red flags to me. Um, you know, we can see right here it says our mission is to promote the Casper network and rocket Casper token price to the moon. Simple as that. You, you know, I, I think that I spent enough time being traumatized by the SEC and the SEC v Ripple Labs case, studying every single document that came out. And boy, can I tell you that the court loves to grapple with this Howie test like no, no other. Now, there's going to be plenty of these meme coins and other small projects that just kind of, you know, uh, are able to kind of move stealthily under the radar and maybe they won't get caught. But there are going to be plenty of projects that do get caught. This is the same kind of language that I saw on the Hex website. Who's in big trouble with the SEC now? Richard Hart, right? What happened to Hex? absolute worst price action that I've seen in this bull market. Um, you know, in again, when we look at decentralized technology, this is the byproduct of decentralized technology. It means that anyone can build anything they want on that network. They can build permissioned or permissionless applications. And that's good. 
But that doesn't mean that just because someone has built an application or has built something on that protocol that I must be involved in this particular protocol or this particular application. Otherwise, I'm not bullish on it and I'm not doing enough for my community. I have zero responsibility to make the price of this token go up. Uh, if this was already the case, right? And you're saying, hey, we're putting all these deploys on the network and this is making this is going to make my price go up. Why, why is Casper sitting at the exact same you know sentiment as the rest of the market now? Why are we not seeing these huge, massive impressions you know, uh, increases in price. I don't feel the need to engage in like ghost activity, no pun intended, uh, on a network in order for me to feel like I'm invested in something that's high quality here. Now, I'm going to roll back a little bit here on Shibu after seeing a little bit more on their website. Now, I will preface this by saying that I want to see this come to fruition. Otherwise, it's just a meme coin with promises. If we can get a good quality NFT marketplace and a DEX, and maybe even both of those combined into one, I would be a lot more bullish on Shibu. I would absolutely love to see all of those things come to fruition because that is true. You're able to get you know more people transacting with NFTs you know in a user friendly platform. Uh, fantastic. But until that happens, we're kind of just in that pre sale mode. We're kind of just still in that you know a, a dream is a wish your heart makes kind of situation. Uh, and I, I want to see a little bit more out of it because right now we're definitely playing on the meme, and that's why you know we, we named it Shibu. If you didn't care about the you know, memes and you didn't want to be riding the waves and the coattails of the meme movement, you would not have named it. Shibu. So that's my really my big concern here um, is that we're just kind of you know bridging off of memes and trying to make it sound a little bit more serious. If we can get so, at least one of two of those big things launched and you have a good quality decks that I can interact with or a good quality NFT marketplace, boom, I'm a Shibu bull all day. And that's definitely going to be a good long-term impact on the Casper network. But there we already have an NFT marketplace uh, and it really hasn't changed super dramatically the price of what we have going on right now. You still need that NFT demand on the marketplace, not just more marketplaces. So um, that's so zero utility and go ahead and, and tell me what that utility is besides just creating ghost of poison the network if you can go ahead and show me what that is fantastic i'll eat my words um but again that's that's where i'm at with fatso that's where i'm at with shibu um hope to see more uh, i i don't think that we need though uh to create ghost transactions in order to see casper price do well by end of this bull market we still have plenty of coins that are still further back in accumulation algorand is a great example of that you look at the algorand chart right now and you would think that algorand's having massive problems they're not um we're just back in reaccumulation right now algorand actually continues to get fundamental bullish news. We just haven't had that huge pop in, in Algorand yet. Uh, we also just haven't seen a huge shedding of Bitcoin dominance yet. I think that everyone has this like intense need to do something different or they need to have some sort of actionable thing in front of them in order to feel like uh, their all coins need to go up at this point because they're like in their heads, they've pinned that we're already in the last you know third of this bull market. When the reality is we haven't even seen most of the behaviors that we've seen in a bull market. We haven't sent, seen you know crazy parabolas in Bitcoin yet. We've seen some of the all coins really pick up, but there's a lot of high quality all coins out there that have a lot of VC money behind them that haven't gone on crazy runs yet. And you think all of those are, are worthless as well. Why is Matic not made a new all-time high yet, right? Why is, you know, AVAX not made a new all-time high yet? There's so many good quality projects out there that are still super far away from their previous all-time high. And it's not because of, of lack of, of network activity or, or on their network. So just want you guys to consider those things. Don't panic. You know, if you're one of those people that I have a strict timeline and I need to be in and out by this date, well, go ahead and do that. But don't be upset and, and try to create these, you know, artificial uh, parameters that need to occur in order for me to be a serious Casper investor. I don't need to buy into any, you know, application that's on the network in order to be bullish on the network as a whole. I like that, Manny. And the purpose of this show in particular, because I can't believe this is probably the, mo the longest we've ever spent on a show talking about meme coins. And the, the purpose here is a lot of people are entering crypto land right now they're looking at projects and they are seeing shibu they're seeing they're definitely not seeing fatso but they're seeing they're seeing like this lot of base of coins you know and i don't want them to enter that way i want that i want them to enter my way i want them to enter with looking at bitcoin analyzing bitcoin how does bitcoin operate okay let's move over let's look at ethereum What's the history of Ethereum? How does Ethereum operate? Because it's vastly different. Well, it's now vastly different than Bitcoin. And now we got these other cryptos. And the, the purpose, if you were just a Bitcoin Ethereum investor, Maddie, I'm just saying this, I would be a lot happier with you. Okay? Than doing like this, <laughs> this meme coin stuff, right? But the problem with me, Maddie, is which I remember the exact day you sold me on this. You, you were showing me the charts and you were showing if these altcoins are sticking around, if they're going to provide value for other companies in the future, how can I pass up this opportunity with these gains that are just sitting on the table? I can't pass these things up, especially when we look at Casper, all right? If you go through when they were at the, um, 
what was it called, the Ray Summit, and you go through and listen to their CEO talk, listen to the CEO talk, and you listen to these people like wanting to bring value like Amazon did back in the early 2000s or how they brought cloud and how they're now Casper is trying to imitate that way with blockchain and their governance using AI governance, which is something that they pivoted to when this AI craze came around. That is cool. And I want to be like, OK, that's the cool part. All right. Now let's talk about the investment, Maddie. We're deep in accumulation, right? That's where you want to be buying. So those are things that I, that gets me excited about investing in crypto, not this other side. Don't let this other side get uh, get you excited, you know, just let it watch you know and watch all these people lose their money and forget to sell because that's what they do these people are twitter traders they don't own they don't have a trading view account they don't talk to people that are in crypto they just go on twitter post their memes and try to sell their meme coins at the end of the cycle and then end up failing you know and so i don't want that to be you guys team if you want to get involved in a community people that are investing in projects of the future, Maddie, right? When we look at Hedera, when we look at API3, these coins have been around for a while. I'll, they're new, but they have been around for a while enough to say, okay, these pro these projects are bringing something really valuable to the table here in crypto land into blockchain. I am going to take a portion of the investment dollars I have every month and I'm going to invest that way. I think that's a smart move. That's something I'm currently doing. Maddie, I know you're doing as well. If you want to learn how to do all those things, become a Crypto Charge member team. I need to see you guys in there so that you guys aren't out, you know, in this wasteland, in the ether. I feel like I've said ether like five times this this show, but it's <laughs> like, don't get lost out there, team. You need to be around people that are level-headed, that have that are a little bit older than I. You know, I'm 22, so I like to listen to the people above me and what was investing like for them. And now I take that approach and invest in crypto that same way, you know. And so, Maddie, I don't want these people to be lost. Anything to leave them with? We went a little bit over here, but anything to leave them with here? Yeah, I know you guys are going to be clicking through that link and kind of jumping on our website. Do not be uh, afraid of the prices you see on the website. You guys can use code YouTube for 50% off any of those memberships, and that could be yearly, quarterly, or annually. Obviously, the savings go up if you choose the uh, annual option over the quarterly option or the monthly option, but either which way, code YouTube will get you 50% off. That includes everything we discussed here. That's going to be the five live updates a week. That's going to be the coin library with our entries and targets. Uh, that's going to be our learning center with all of the videos that you need. If, especially if you're new to crypto, uh, to kind of get a lot of these basics down. That's going to be our Discord community as well. So again, you know, when we're going live, trade ideas in there. We're doing a weekly technical analysis workshop in there where you guys can do live Q&A with us. Uh, and of course, just be able to interact with others, you know, get tech support if you guys need help moving to other wallets, things of that nature. Uh, you know, and at a monthly rate of basically 50 bucks a month with that coupon. I sincerely do not think that there's anyone else out there providing this level of support uh, at the prices of either you know, 49 a month or 4.99 for the year. So either of those come with a 30 day free trial. Check it out. If you guys don't like it, day 29, shoot me an email, get you squared away. I like that, Maddie. Team Ask Maddie Show this Wednesday, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. So make sure you guys leave your questions down below. And if they're good, I'll pull them up here and, you know, we'll go through them and see what you guys are having to say at this current moment. Uh, but other than that, team, I think that's it. We will see you guys Wednesday. Bye.